All right, following Tuesday's sports wagering action, we are 5-0 and in our last $5.99 daily best plays on BrockPage.com. And the link for that package is in the description section below. It's only going to cost you just $1.99. You can actually access that right now. $1,000 bettors are up over $4,500 during that span. We currently have over 800 members who are signed up and active on my website right now. And as always, guys, all the picks that I give out on BrockPage.com, they're my personal bets, games that I personally have action on. And with that, guys, we're going to go ahead and uh, dive into some college basketball action. Iowa takes on Maryland, 7 o'clock Eastern tip-off on Thursday, February 9th, 2022. The Iowa Hawkeyes are minus 4.5 with the total at 150. But as good as Iowa's been offensively this year, they actually lost five out of their last seven road games, and they're shooting only 38% from the field when they travel. And as a matter of fact, these guys are scoring only 69 points a game away from home this year, and they're making only 28% of their three-pointers in that same category. This is like a completely different team uh, when they get on the bus and uh, skip town. I mean, these guys are really not traveling well. Now, they're taking on a Maryland team who plays some really good defense at the uh, Xfinity Center. The Terps are allowing only 65 points a game in front of their home fans, and they're also limiting their competition to just 40% shooting from the field there. Now, scoring-wise, Eric Ayala is averaging 15 points a game along with four rebounds and a couple assists. Meanwhile, Fats Russell, he's scoring a dozen points a game himself along with four boards and three assists as well. Now, the Terrapins are in the top 10 in the nation in offensive free throw percentage at home. When it comes to the total in this one, Maryland is 10-4 to the under on their home court. Meanwhile, Iowa saw three out of their last five ball games fall under the line themselves. I'm going to lean toward Maryland plus four and a half in the under 150. Next contest, it is going to be Hofstra versus Drexel, 7 p.m. Eastern start time. The Drexel Dragons are minus one and a half, totals 146. Now, the Dragons are 6-2 and two straight up at home this year, and they're scoring 78 points a game in those contests. Malik Martin, he's drilling over 45% of his three-pointers this season, and he's also averaging double-digit points a game. Meanwhile, Xavier Bell is making 40% of his three-pointers, He's also scoring over 10.5 points a game as well. Meanwhile, defensively, well, Drexel's allowing only 67 uh, points a game at home. They're taking on a Hofstra team who does not play their best basketball on the road. And as a matter of fact, these guys dropped eight out of their last 13 road games. And they're allowing 74 points per contest during that stretch. Now, total-wise, three out of Hofstra's last four got over the posted number. Meanwhile, Drexel, saw, uh, Drexel excuse me, saw overs against the likes of Delaware, William & Mary, and Northeastern. I'm going to go ahead and lean toward Drexel, minus one and a half in the over, 146. Next ball game, it is going to be North Dakota State versus Western Illinois, and that's going to be a 7 o'clock Eastern start time. Western Illinois is minus one with a total at 148 and a half. Now, the Western Illinois Leathernecks lost four out of their last six, and they've really struggled defensively this year. As a matter of fact, Western Illinois is giving up nearly 77 points a game on the defensive end of the court. They're also taking on a, a North Dakota State team who won six out of their last seven ball games themselves, and they're actually limiting their competition to just 28% shooting from three land away from home. Now, scoring-wise, Rocky Creasers averaging over 16.5 points per contest, along with eight rebounds and 40% shooting from three land. Meanwhile, Jerry's Cook, he's drilling 40% of his three-pointers himself. He's also averaging nearly double-digit points a game. Now, rebounding-wise, the Bison are in the top 20 in the nation in road offensive boards. When it comes to the total on this one, Notre, I'm sorry, uh, North Dakota State, they saw overs recently with South Dakota, uh, UMKC, and South Dakota State. Uh, meanwhile, Western Illinois, they went 6-3 and three to the over in their last nine. Now, they're also 80% to the over in their last 10 meetings with the Bison. So if you're into historical trends, you certainly want to think about that one there. 
I'm going to go ahead and lean toward North Dakota State plus one in the over 148 and a half. Next matchup, it's, uh, it's going to be Texas Arlington versus UL Monroe, and that's going to be a 7.30 Eastern start time. Texas Arlington is minus one on the road, totals 133 and a half. Now the uh, Mavericks of Texas Arlington, they've uh, not been playing good basketball lately. They actually lost five out of their last six ball games, and they're just two and ten straight up away from their home court. Now the Mavs have had significant problems uh, offensively this year. They're actually scoring only 62 points a game away from home. And they're making just 39% of their field goals in that same category. Now, they're taking on a UL Monroe team who won their last two straight. And they've also got themselves a winning record at home. And speaking of home games, the Warhawks average nearly 80 points a game in front of their home fans. And uh, they're also making 49% of their field goals on their home court. Andre Jones is averaging 14.5 points per contest along with three rebounds and four assists. Meanwhile, Russell Harrison, he's averaging 13 points a game himself, along with five boards. Now, total-wise, ULM 60% to the over in their last 10 at home. They're also 61% to the over for the entire season. Meanwhile, Texas Arlington is 6-2 and two to the over in their last eight ball games themselves. I'm going to lean toward UL Monroe, plus one in the over, 133.5. Next matchup, little ACC action. I'm talking about Duke versus Clemson, 8 o'clock Eastern start time. Duke's minus 7.5, totals 143. Now, Duke got the W in 7 out of their last 9 ball games, and they covered in nearly 70% of those contests. Now, the Blue Devils are allowing only 64 points a game when they travel, and they're limiting their competition to just 39% shooting from the field in that same category. Now, scoring-wise, Paolo Bancaro is scoring over 17 points a game, along with eight rebounds and two assists. Meanwhile, A.J. Griffin, he's drilling 49% of his three-pointers, and he's averaging just about double-digit points a game. He's pretty uh, automatic from three-land. Now, the uh, Blue Devils, they're scoring over 80 points a game, and they also rank in the top 20 in offensive field goal percentage. No real surprise there with those stats. Now, um, they're... Uh, what am I trying to tell you? Their opponents, uh, they're taking on a Clemson team. Man, brain fart. They're taking on a Clemson team who lost seven out of their last 10 ball games, and uh, they've actually had a tough time grabbing offensive boards at home. Now, total-wise, five out of Clemson's last nine ball games fell under the posted number. They're also 60% to the under in their last 10 meetings with Duke. So once again, if you're into historical trends, plenty of unders to go around. Meanwhile, the Blue Devils on the other side, they saw four out of their last six road games fall under the line themselves. I'm going to lean toward Duke, minus seven and a half, in the under 143. Next ball game, it is going to be Texas State versus Louisiana. That's going to be an eight o'clock Eastern start time. Texas State is minus one on the road, totals 134 and a half. But despite being on a three game winning streak, the Texas State Bobcats have a losing record on the road. And they're allowing over 70 points a game in those contests. Now, when it comes to guarding the three ball, the Bobcats are letting their opponents make nearly 40% of their three-pointers against them when they travel. They're taking on a Louisiana team who's winning 60% of their home games. And they're also scoring 75 points a game in front of their home fans. Jordan Brown's averaging over 15 points a game along with eight boards and 50% shooting from the field. Meanwhile, Kobe Julian is scoring over 11 points a game himself, along with three rebounds. And when it comes to defensive play in this one, the Raging Cajuns are limiting their competition to just 29% shooting from three land. Now, total-wise, Louisiana saw overs recently with Texas Arlington and this very Texas State team. Meanwhile, the Bobcats, on the other side of things, they saw three out of their last four get over the line themselves. I'm going to lean toward the Louisiana Ragin' Cajuns plus one in the over 134 and a half. Next ball game, it is going to be Florida Atlantic versus Western Kentucky. And that's going to be an eight o'clock Eastern start time. Western Kentucky's minus five with a total at 147 and a half. 
Now, the Hilltoppers are on a two-game winning streak, and they score a whole lot of points at home. They're actually averaging 81 points a game in the Diddle Arena, and they're making nearly 50% of their field goals there. Cameron Justice is scoring 14 points a game, and he's nailing nearly 40% of his three balls. Meanwhile, Josh Anderson, he's making 41% of his three-pointers himself. He's also scoring a dozen points a game. Now, they're taking on a Florida Atlantic club who lost six out of their last eight road games, and they actually have a tough time guarding the three ball. As a matter of fact, FAU's letting their opponents make nearly 40% of their three-pointers against them when they travel. Now, total-wise, when it comes to the number in this one, FAU saw their last five straight all get over the posted number. They were also 7-1 to the over in their last eight. Meanwhile, Western Kentucky, 75% to the over on their home court. I'm going to lean toward Western Kentucky, minus five in the over, 147.5. Next matchup, it is going to be Arizona versus Washington State. That's going to be a 9 o'clock Eastern start time. Arizona's minus 5.5 with a total at 142. Now, there's really not many teams out there that score more than Arizona. These guys are dropping over 85 points a game, and they actually rank in the top three in the country in road scoring. Now, the Wildcats are also amongst the best rebounding teams in the country as well. They're currently in the top three in offensive boards per game. Now, Benny Mathurin. He's scoring 16.5 points a game along with six boards and a couple assists. Meanwhile, Azzy Tubelis is averaging over 14.5 points per contest along with six boards and two and a half assists as well. Meanwhile, defensively on the other end of the court, the Wildcats, they've been pretty good there as well. They're actually limiting their opponents to just 37% shooting from the field. They're in the top three in the country in that particular category. Uh, this is a very good, very well-rounded club who plays good basketball on both ends of the court. Now, they're taking on a Washington State team who failed to cover in five out of their last nine. And they also have a losing record against the spread at home. Now, the Cougars also lost nine out of their last ten head-to-head -head meetings with Arizona. So when it comes to head-to-head -head matchups here, it's been all Arizona over the past couple of years. Now, uh, a couple more things to add here about Washington State. They're actually having a tough time shooting the basketball at home. They're making only 41% of their field goals at the, uh, at the Beasley Performing Arts Center. When it comes to the total on this one, the Cougs have given up 79 points per contest in their last 10 meetings with Arizona. Meanwhile, the Wildcats are 4-3 and three to the over in their last seven on the road. I'm going to lean toward Arizona minus 5.5 and, and the over 142. Next matchup, it is going to be University of Pacific taking on Gonzaga. 9 o'clock Eastern start time. Now, Gonzaga is minus 33, totals 154 and a half. The Gonzaga Bulldogs are on a 12-game winning streak, and they're still undefeated at home. The Bulldogs are leading the nation in scoring. They're averaging 91 points a game, and they're making 54% of their field goals. Now, Drew Timmy, he's scoring over 17.5 points a game, along with six boards and a couple assists. Meanwhile, Chet Holmgren, he's draining over 46% of his three-pointers. He's also scoring 14 points a game. Uh, the Bulldogs are currently leading the nation in offensive rebounding. They're taking on a Pacific squad who's a winless 0-10 on the road this year. And they're averaging only 59 points a game when they travel. This could be an absolute massacre here uh, on Thursday night. Now, uh, Pacific's also shooting just 38% from the field away from home. When it comes to the total in this one, Pacific's 70% to the under on the road this year. Meanwhile, the Zags are 8-5 and five to the under in their last 13 at home. I'm going to lean toward Gonzaga, minus 33, and the under, 143.5. <clears throat> Next contest, little Big Ten action. I'm talking about Purdue versus Michigan, 9 o'clock East. Purdue's minus three on the road, totals 150. Now, Purdue's on a six-game winning streak, <coughs> and they're in the top five in the nation in scoring on average per game. The Boilermakers are dropping 85 points per contest, and they're making over 41% of their three-pointers. 
Mason Gillis is making 51% of his shots from beyond the arc. He's also averaging four rebounds a game. This guy is automatic from three land. Meanwhile, Jaden Ivey, he's scoring over 17 and a half points a game, along with 41% shooting from three land and, uh, himself. Produces currently in the top three in shooting the ball from the field. Now, they're taking on a Michigan team who failed to cover in seven out of their last 10. And they're having a tough time grabbing offensive boards at home. The Wolverines are also making just 33% of their three-pointers at the Chrysler Center. Now, total-wise, Michigan went 6-3 and three to the over in their last nine at home. They're also 7-3 and three to the over in their last 10 against Purdue. Meanwhile, the Boilermakers on the other side of things, they went 70% to the over in their last 10 away from their home court. I'm going to go ahead and lean toward Purdue, minus 3, in the over, 150. Can't imagine that number is going to stay at 3. I think that one's going to get a little bit bigger by tip-off. All right, next contest. It is going to be San Diego versus St. Mary's, 9 p.m. Eastern start time. St. Mary's is minus 15 and a half, totals 126. And although St. Mary's is undefeated at home this year, they failed to cover the number in their last two straight, and they're actually averaging only 69 points a game for the entire year. I wouldn't quite describe these guys as offensive juggernauts, they're actually taking on a San Diego team who covered the point spread in seven out of their last 10. And they're allowing only 65 points a game for the entire year. So I really wouldn't be surprised uh, if St. Mary's was held to under 70 points in this one. Now, scoring wise, the uh, San Diego Toreros are led by Marcellus Erlington, who's scoring 13 points a game along with six rebounds. Meanwhile, Jace Townsend is scoring over 10 and a half points per contest himself along with three boards and 41% shooting from three land. Now, San Diego is also doing a real nice job grabbing offensive rebounds on the road. When it comes to the total in this one, San Diego saw unders recently with Pepperdine and Portland. They were also 7-3 to the under in their last 10 against St. Mary's. Meanwhile, the Gales saw a contest with Portland. Uh, they saw a contest with Portland and BYU stay under the posted total themselves. I'm going to lean towards San Diego, plus 15 and a half, and the under, 126. Next ball game, it is going to be Stanford versus Oregon, 9 p.m. Eastern start time. Oregon's minus eight and a half, totals 140. Now, the Ducks have been playing some really good basketball as of late. They're actually nine and one straight up in their last 10, and they're making nearly 50% of their field goals at home. Will Richardson's drilling 47% of his three-pointers. He's also scoring 15 points a game. Meanwhile, Davian Harmon is averaging over 10.5 points per contest himself. He's also drilling nearly 40% of his three-pointers. Now, the uh, Ducks are also doing a real nice job grabbing defensive rebounds this year as well. They're taking on a Stanford team who lost five out of their last seven on the road. And they're scoring only 61 points a game when they travel. Now, the Cardinal is also making just 66% of their free throws. So when you put them to the, uh, to the stripe, they're really not making their opponents pay. Essentially, they're making three of five from the line. Now, total-wise, Stanford's five and two to the under in their road games this year. Meanwhile, Oregon saw unders recently with Colorado, Oregon State, and Washington. I'm going to lean toward Oregon, minus eight and a half, and the under, 140. Next matchup. It is going to be Weber State versus Eastern Washington, 9 o'clock Eastern tip-off. Weber State's minus three, totals 159. Now, Weber got the W in eight out of their last nine ball games, <coughs> and they're scoring a whole bunch of points this season. The Wildcats are actually averaging 79 points a game on the road, and they're in the top ten in shooting the three ball away from home. Seku Sisoho Jawara is making 42% of his three-pointers. We'll call him SSJ. Seku Sisoho Jawara. He's making 42% of his three-pointers. He's also scoring over a dozen points a game. Meanwhile, Kobe McEwen's averaging 17 points a night himself, along with four boards and a couple assists. Now, Weber State currently finds themselves in the top 10 in the nation in offensive field goal percentage on the road. They're taking on an Eastern Washington team 
who allows entirely too many points. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. They just aren't playing good enough defensively this season. The Eagles are giving up 79 points a game in front of their home fans. That's at home. And they also failed to cover in four out of their last six at Reese Court. Now, uh, at the Reese Center, excuse me. <laughs> now, total-wise, five out of Eastern Washington's last six home games got over the posted number. Meanwhile, Weber State is 7-2 and two to the over in their last nine on the road. I'm going to lean toward Weber State, minus three in the over, 159. Next ball game, it is going to be Arizona State versus Washington, 11 o'clock Eastern start time. The Washington Huskies are minus one and a half, totals 135. Now, the Huskies won seven out of their last 10 ball games. They actually covered the point spread in 70% of those contests. Now, Washington also allows just 67 points a game at home, and they're limiting their competition to just 31% shooting from three land in that same category. This is a team who's playing some really tough defense uh, in that category. Now, Terrell Brown Jr., he's averaging 22 points per contest offensively, along with four boards and four assists. Meanwhile, Emmett Matthews, he's scoring over 11 points a game himself, along with five rebounds. Now, they're taking on an Arizona State team who lost eight out of their last 10. And they're scoring very few points when traveling. The Sun Devils are also making just 27% of their three-pointers on the road. And they're amongst the worst in the Pac-12 in road offensive rebounding. Now, total-wise, five out of the Sun Devils' last seven road games fell under the posted number. Meanwhile, Washington's 8-3 and three to the under in their last 11 at home. I'm going to lean toward Washington, minus 1.5, and, and the under, 135. Next matchup, it is going to be BYU versus Loyola Marymount, 11 o'clock Eastern start time. BYU's minus 8 on the road, totals 139. And despite their current skid right now, the Cougars are still one of the best offensive rebounding uh, teams in the game. BYU is currently in the top five in the nation in offensive rebounding on the road. And they're led by Fusaini Traore, who's grabbing over eight rebounds a game. Now, scoring-wise, Alex Borcello is scoring 17 points per contest, along with three rebounds and three assists. And when it comes to defensive play in this one, the Cougs are actually limiting their competition to just 28% shooting from three land. Now, they're taking on a Loyola team who lost their last five straight themselves, and they're also allowing 72 points a game on their home court. And when it comes to rebounding in this one, the Lions are actually amongst the worst in the West Coast Conference in defensive boards. Now, total-wise, Loyola is 6-3 and three to the over on their home court this year. The Lions are also 60% to the over in their last 10 meetings with BYU. Now, the Cougars, on the other side of things, they saw six out of their last eight on the road get over the line as well. I'm going to lean toward BYU minus eight in the over 139. All right, next and final matchup of the show, it is going to be Pepperdine versus San Francisco. Now, it's going to be an 11 o'clock Eastern start time. The San Francisco Dons are minus 18 at home, totals 143 and a half. Now, the Dons are scoring 80 points a game at home this year. And they've also gone 12 and 3 straight up at War Memorial Gym. Jamari Bouye scores over 18 points a game, along with 41% shooting from downtown. Meanwhile, Julian Rishwain is making 45% of his three pointers himself. And when it comes to rebounding in this one, the Dons currently find themselves in the top 35 in the nation in offensive boards. They're taking on a Pepperdine team who allows 81 points a game when they travel. And they're amongst uh, the worst in the West Coast Conference in road defensive boards. These guys have been an absolute mess on the defensive end of the court this year. Now, offensively, the Waves are actually scoring only 65 points a game when they travel. So they're really not all that impressive on the offensive end of the court either. When it comes to the total on this one, Pepperdine saw overs, recent, uh, Pepperdine saw overs recently with St. Mary's, Loyola Marymount, and Gonzaga. Meanwhile, San Francisco is 9-5 of the over in their last 14 on the uh, uh, at home. So uh, I'm going to lean towards San Francisco minus 18 in the over, 143 and a half.
And with that, guys, we're going to jump into our quick pick recap powered to you by my website at brockpage.com, where we are 5-0 in our last $5.99 daily best plays after Tuesday's sports wagering action. I like Maryland plus 4.5 under 150. Drexel minus 1.5 over 146. <coughs> North Dakota State plus 1 over 148.5. UL Monroe plus one over 133 and a hook. Duke minus seven and a half under 143. Louisiana Raging Cajuns plus one over 134 and a half. Western Kentucky minus five over 147 and a hook. Arizona minus five and a half over 142. Gonzaga minus 33 under 143 and a half. Purdue minus three over 150. San Diego, plus 15 and a half, under 126. Oregon, minus 8 and a half, under 140. Weber State, minus 3, over 159. Washington Huskies, minus 1 and a half, under 135. BYU, minus 8, over 139. And with my next and final free pick for the video, I'm going to lean towards San Francisco, minus 18, in the over 143 and a half. And with that, guys, that's going to do it for me. Don't forget to check me out on BrockPage.com. Now, if you guys do end up getting a membership here today on my website, just keep in mind, you're going to get billed the day you sign up and then the first of every month following that. I always tell folks in every single video, the earlier in the month you sign up, the better. And if you guys want to get access to every single pick that I give out on that website, you're going to want to sign up for my board member package. But anyway, guys, most importantly, I got to thank you for joining me right here on YouTube. I really hope you enjoyed all this great free content, all this great free information. And with that said, guys, happy uh, Wednesday or Thursday to you, depending on when you're watching this. Best of luck to you. And I look forward to seeing you later on today on my website at brockpage.com.